Welcome to Social Media Meltdown, brought to you by Just Cool Enough. I'm Joe. And I'm Caitlin. And this week's topic is social media fatigue. It's Is it happening? Are, are we already tired of social media and melt? Are, are we melting down, Caitlin? What's going on? <laughs> we are. And I kind of feel like that's the point of the show almost, is that everything is just melting down because we're just overwhelmed by everything. So, but it's true. It's happening. So what what is happening here? We have we have um, so many things. I kind of feel like we're being inundated a little bit. Um, we actually had some email last week. Some things went good as the first episode. We're feeling good. Uh, what are we going to talk about this this show here? What... Well, we're going to talk about what leads up to social media fatigue what causes it, and then how it actually affects you as a person, Uh, and then kind of go over some things to conquer it, because that's really the only way that you're going to feel better um, about it, is if you take steps to make sure you're not feeling that way. That sounds good. Why don't we get started? Um, Well, what what kind of leads up to social media fatigue? Where uh, I know, like, I'm looking at Facebook, and I'm feeling like, Okay, Facebook I could deal with, Twitter I could deal with, but then it's like, okay, now we have these other networks, like things like Foursquare, things like um, Pinterest. Is that, I mean, is that something we're going to start grouping in with this? And then, you know, Zynga. Zynga is actually breaking off of Facebook and making their own gaming sites, but it's going to be kind of connected, social. Everything is a social media aspect. I mean, from Orchid to MySpace to Facebook to friendster to i mean don't i I feel like it's just all kind of crushing down on us here it is it's i I don't even know where to start sometimes when i want to sit down and check all my personal stuff and it's like what do you pay attention to you have to almost prioritize what you have time to pay attention to and if you try to cover everything at once that's where you really start getting um, anxiety over social media. So I don't have time to check my Facebook because I checked my email for too long or I tweeted too many times. And as silly as it might sound, that's actually problems that people are having. And I mean, I have to be honest that I have some of those problems. Of course, you know, like, but I, I think it comes with the territory. Uh, yeah. Not everyone has to be a social media specialist like uh, Caitlin over here to uh, to kind of feel these things because even just, uh, I mean, I want to classify myself as like an average social media user because I kind of put myself out there a little bit more. But I, I think even just talking to people in general, like they, I, I feel like um, normal people are starting to feel this squeeze, like, you know, I just there's so much crap on Facebook. And now that we can actually regulate the amount of crap we see on Facebook through that that feed in the center where you can unsubscribe or only most important things. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like I, I really think it almost highlights the, 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 this echo chamber. I like, you know, it feels like, it feels like one thing is said over and over and over and over again. I, I, and, and it's kind of leading to this meltdown of social media, this, this, this fatigue I'm feeling. Cause I, I don't, you know what? I, I drew the line. I said, you know what, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. You said I, no to Pinterest, didn't you? Um, I haven't even, I, I've been on Pinterest, but I'm not going to sign up yet. Um, but but I, I'm kind of putting everything on hold, you know. I'm like, all right, let's kind of deal with this. You know, I got a Tumblr, and I, I have a Google Plus account. That I mean, who checks Google Plus, right? I know, I was going to say, does that really uh, stress you out there? Cause no, Google like, Plus is just like the <laughs> nagging stepchild of it is like I I feel like I have to use it and it's it is it's the nagging stepchild but thing. that's the thing every time there's a new thing we have to use it to see if it's good or not but it, we leave this giant trail of just social media madness <laughs> you know like all this awful stuff behind us I and you know we're leaving a trail on the internet it's not focused it's just like little bits I, I just feel like my information is spread out all over. I want to consolidate. I want to feel better. But and at some point when all this new stuff keeps coming out, like there has to be some kind of give. Like eventually you have to give something up. And even as an avid user, um, I have to admit that as much as I love Tumblr, 
when I started experimenting with Pinterest because my company was interested in it and um, I was interested in it as um, as like a branding technique not only for companies but for individuals and I just got sucked down the rabbit hole and now I've kind of left I wouldn't say left but I kind of left Tumblr you you because they are so similar but I feel like I'll go back to Tumblr over staying on Pinterest so I mean like what what is making Pinterest edge out Tumblr. Where where is the line there? Um, I think is it, it because it's new and shiny. It's partly because it's new and shiny, but then it also it lacks the silliness of Tumblr. So it's almost a more legitimate thing. Like you would, I feel like if you were applying for someone in my position was applying for a job, I would never give someone my Tumblr because I just don't think that they would understand the cats with bread over their face that I post on Tumblr. <laughs> um, but, but they but they understand the, the product photography and the recipes and more professional subjects. Of you know what, though? That's just something that you're seeing because that's what you're subscribing to. You can do this on any network. You can go on Tumblr and not see cats with bread, you know, like putting their face through bread. If they're... Uh, and I, I love spreading. Yes, yeah, you can go all the way through the internet and not see any of that stuff. It just depends where you go. But something like Pinterest, I mean, there's there's awful Pinterest boards already. There's there's there ones with scantily clad women. There's ones that show off uh, beautiful fo- photography that's all artsy. You know, like yeah. it, it just it's really what you're subscribing to. So maybe maybe your Tumblr is just you know a shell of the person you once were. You know, like maybe maybe when we grow as a person, as a person, you know, now we're like we have to like shed a social network like a like a snake sheds its skin, or or you know, like, like we a, shed MySpace and yeah. we shed Live Journal. Exactly, you know. That's what I'm saying. As you move, there has to be some give. Like at this point, there's no way I could be keeping up with my my 500 live journal accounts and my MySpace and my Facebook and my Twitter and my Tumblrs, plural Tumblrs, and my pin boards. And there's just no way that any one person, that's not conceivable to even take care of all those things. They're all children, basically. (laughs) And if you malnourish one of them, then your entire online persona will die. And that's that's the sad truth of it, though. I mean, you can only do... You can only really do so much, and it, we this and this is where I drew the line. I I was a little creeped out by Foursquare because it always knows where you are. I don't really, I'm not really that against. I like it. how you say Foursquare always knows where you are, but it's the fact that you checked in somewhere. You that know, that's the thing. Like now, like I'm, I, I mean, I'm embarrassed to show a crappy BlackBerry. I'll, I'll give it an Android phone or something for next time. But like, um. <laughs> Like, even, like, Twitter, I have my location-based services on. So, I mean, it knows where I'm tweeting from. It knows when I'm tweeting, and it can kind of triangulate where I've been throughout the day. But I, I don't think that's as, as creepy. And I was already on Twitter. I'm like, okay, what the hell? It knows where I am. All right, I'm in Frankfurt, Kentucky today, whatever. Um, but, like, something like Foursquare, it's, like, asking me to do work, more work to be part of the social network. Now, I, I did read that Foursquare is going to have near-field communication check-in where you're just basically, basically like pop, you know, just tap your phone up against, like, I'm here kind of thing, like yeah. at the cash register, and that's going to automatically check you in. Something like that might take off, but I just, I don't need any more work. I don't, I'm I'm done socializing. I, I've, I've started cutting back the people I'm following. I've started exactly. cutting back the, uh, like, and I feel like I've ruined my Facebook because I'm following so many people. That, or, yeah, or, I just found out that um, you don't have me in a certain group on Facebook, so I can't tell when you're online. That's true. I'm you <laughs> really offended by I, that. I, 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 there's only like five people in that group, including my mom. <laughs> like, I was really offended. <laughs> I'm so sorry you're not in the same group as my mother. <laughs> I'll move you there. Jeez. I'll put you right there next to my brother and my mom and my girlfriend. And then no, there's you're like the perfect example. Like you were so um, just overwhelmed by the amount of people that you couldn't even conceive a way to communicate with all of them. So your strategy to um, take care of that was to basically block everyone, which is 
a valid reason or a valid um, tactic at conquering social media fatigue. That and that's the thing. When when I'm trying to deal with this, that that's like the only way. I I feel like everyone actually has overshared at this point. I you know like there's just so much out there. We need to kind of reel it in. Like it was great. It was it was the beginning of social media and social networking and. Um, you know, we lived through MySpace and Friendster and Orchid, and now we're kind of at this verge here where there's a lot of different interesting networks, and we kind of got to take back control. We you do. Know, I, it, we, we're done oversharing. Let's reel it in, and let's have a honest internet. Not, hey, I went to high school with you, and I think I remember your... We should be friends. Yeah, like, I, I'm kind of done with that. I And I, I love my listeners as friends and stuff like that. I don't mind that because, you know, that's something I'm interacting with, but mm-hmm. there needs to be a line between, you know, your personal life and your internet life. And I, I feel like I've ruined that. And I think a lot of other people have by just accepting everyone and putting everyone into one group. And mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're getting kind of Facebook centric here, but you can apply this to any social network except for exactly. Google. I mean, there's, the, there's the groups on, on Twitter, which is, I utilize a lot because I was getting, annoyed by the amount of I because I like to read tech news but sometimes I just want to hear what my friends are doing on Twitter so I started going through all of the people I follow and putting them into all these groups and it's really helped a lot because if I just want to read tech news like on my lunch I don't have to scroll through um that girl from you know high school that's another girl segment (laughs) another girl's posting some dirty awful thing saying stupid stuff and I don't want to. I don't want to then deal with that that stuff either. But but no. isn't this why Google made Google Plus? They've completely changed their focus of Google Plus. By the way, um, over at the uh, mobile world. I think you like Google Plus. What, what is that? What, I, I think you like Google Plus. You I, talk about an awful like, lot. I just like to pretend it's not there. It's the underdog, you know. You know, <laughs> I don't like the underdog. And it's funny because like Google completely switched their uh, the the way they're talking about it. They're like. When they when it first came out, like Google Plus is gonna crush everything, but now they're like Google Plus is integrated part of the Google experience, and it's an important part. That's too, it's just gonna be there, so because yeah. they know that they're you know getting their ass handed to them by Pinterest at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that came out yeah, where it is still in Google Plus place. came out, and they were just like, oh, we only have to compete with Facebook, and then they didn't do so hot, and then here comes Pinterest out of nowhere, and it's you know you know like the world and Google Plus didn't get anywhere close to that. But that's like, okay, so we have like a bunch of different kinds of social media and social networking abilities right now. You have your quick blurb, you know, your 12 second dot, you know, like just your 12 second video or your quick Instagram post or your Your micro blogging, if you will. Yeah, a micro blog from the mouth of a speech. (laughs) But yeah, so, um, so you have your micro blogging and then whatever the other term is, properly macro blogging i guess i think it's just called traditional blogging i don't traditional know blogging i well what is macro facebook? blogging is my favorite macro blog yes mm, macro blogging macro. if i had to pick a specialty as a social media specialist i would pick macro or micro blogging i think that's that's kind of the funnest thing because it's not funnest that's kind of the best thing because it's like it's it's not sticky, you know. Like some, no. if I say something, I just want to get it out there. I don't care who sees it. I don't care who retweets it. Just, hey, this is what I did, or what do you think about this, or why is this like that? It, I don't care who. It's kind of more of one way communication. And something like a a uh, a post on Facebook has a lot more lifetime value because it's just real sticky, you know. People people latch onto it, and like two months down the line, somebody's liking something. It's like who's resing my old posts. You know? Yeah, that's really creepy when someone, like, likes a picture from, like, four years ago, and you're like, great, you were just looking through all my Facebook pages. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. Like, it, there, maybe there should be, like, a cutoff. <laughs> but we, <laughs> You just can't access it anymore. This is a completely plain, like, we all overshared. Every one of us. Yes. So and I think sometimes we... that's where that fatigue comes from, is just people oversharing. I think if we used it responsibly... It would be a lot more boring, well, but maybe not so stressful. And I, I think it's really making an effect on people here. I think it's, I, 
I'm not getting stressed out by it, but I am shutting down. You know, like I'm like, okay, I'm I'm becoming a lot more. I, I'm You're a lot more cynical of social. Yes, I'm becoming a. Where I just like live and breathe it, and it it really does stress me out. Like I have a hard time going to bed at night because I, I hear my phone zzz, zzz, or woo woo, and I'm like, oh, look, I gotta look, and then I hear my iPad going off if I silence my phone, and it's yeah. just I have to get up and go look and. Well, that's the you know your people are retweeting stuff and your Facebook's blowing up and this is all like yeah I, I never post on Facebook and here's another thing I don't post on Facebook because it makes me nervous that people won't respond to my status but like I don't care if no one responds to my tweet no one retweets it I don't care if anyone even cares that I'm eating a candy cane in the middle of July but. <laughs> It really bothers me if no one says anything about my status. So I just don't post statuses. So so you're you're like, you know, if I can't, if I don't, if I don't try, I won't fail kind of thing. Exactly. <laughs> See, I I just I don't know. Because I only on Facebook. It's only my closest friends and family. Like I don't have that many people on Facebook. It's some people from high school, but I've slowly been unfriending them yeah seriously though i've been doing the same thing and i'm about ready and this is the term that i've used before when i was speaking with you uh and i'm going to spread it out on the internet now i'm going to do a frenicide you know i'm <laughs> going to be just just mass frenicide on facebook and get it down to the people that i want to uh, i i'm so sick of just the noise there's an incredible amount of noise and you know not even just in facebook but there's a lot of reposts everywhere from dig to reddit to all these content uh, aggregators that are just spewing the same stuff over and over again and that's why i think things like uh, echo chamber is just like a, a buzzword that sticks in my head because that's what i feel is going on there's there's not really natural content and i think it's really wearing on me yeah the, uh, t um, pinterest is starting to go that way where it's just people repinning um, it doesn't have as much, like, curation as um, Tumblr does. Like, there aren't many people putting original content out there. It's kind of the same people. Like, I think they said, like, 70% of Pinterest users are just repinners. So you're constantly seeing the same thing over and over again, which wears on you because you're like, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this. So then you're on there even longer trying to see something you haven't seen. Yeah, totally, totally. And great for advertisers and as, annoying for everyone else but at the same time you're not going to leave because you want that feeling of satisfaction that you saw something different well yeah and uh, as an av an avid redditor i totally understand that you know like it, it happens on a lot of sites but how can we conquer this how do we solve this problem where, where do we go from here i mean like i said it's all about um breaking things out into to smaller more manageable groups and it's cutting ties with things that don't matter anymore. Like, if you're still checking your Facebook, you should probably give up. Um, <laughs> as far as, like, Twitter goes, like, I get upset if I don't tweet an X amount of tweets a day. Like I said, I don't care if no one looks at it. So in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee, I go on Hootsuite and I schedule, you know, 40 tweets for the day. And I leave it at that. And then if I have time to tweet about more personal stuff during the day, because usually that's just me reposting um, news and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if I have time to put in some personal stuff during the day, then I do. Um, Facebook, I don't really go on Facebook anymore. Like so, I do, just to check, but I, I don't do anything. And so uh, Facebook is kind of your, I mean, that's that's what's kind of, but don't you think Facebook has, like, the legs and it's going to be around longer than all these other ones? Don't you feel that that's still the base uh, Absolutely. network for all the stuff going on right now? Absolutely. I think everything that exists right now has come out of ideas revolving around Facebook. Um, and Facebook has come out of ideas revolving around other social networks. And I don't think a lot of what we have now can exist without Facebook. Facebook has the money for the research and for the innovation and to hire all the people to make all this stuff happen, um, which is why a lot of people say that Google Plus didn't work because Google obviously has a lot of money, but when it comes down to all their little projects, they don't allocate a lot of money for anyone in particular besides the actual search engine.
So they don't have the money to put out there to keep up with technology like Facebook does. So I don't think Facebook's going anywhere. But at the same time, it doesn't really fit into my life, I guess, because they're all close friends. And... It, so it sounds like you're breaking up with Facebook over the Internet. Like, you know, Facebook, it just... It's not you, it's me. Actually, yeah. it's you, but... No, it's it's so. Facebook. It's you, Facebook. No, and I mean, and I... um. Pretty much the only thing I use Facebook for is to put out pictures and um, the little groups. I love the groups, which I introduced you to. Yes, which I, won't matter after this week because I'm just going to delete all my friends and start over. Is that is that a, is that something I should, I, should I not do that? <laughs> no, I'm, I just get so upset because you just don't want to be my friend on Facebook anymore. I didn't say I was going to delete you. I'm not sure why I'm upset because I don't like Facebook. But you would survive the front aside. I don't. didn't mean I don't like Facebook. I do. I just it doesn't work with my life. Well, I, I'm interested in what our uh, our listeners have to say here. Um, give us an email. Our email address is social media meltdown at justcoolenough.com. That is social media meltdown at justcoolenough.com. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, we did get a couple of emails in. A lot of them were just kind of like, hey, just wanted to say thanks, you guys are awesome, and uh, we always appreciate those, but just give us a little bit of, uh, you know. Or well, they can type in a little chat box on the side, too. There's a chat box on the side? What kind of? A live stream, wherever you can. Oh, the, the, we have live viewers. Hello, yeah. live viewers. That's right. I totally forgot. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, if you have some questions and stuff, uh, type it into the chat box over at the side of the live stream. By the way, this show streams live on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock yeah. Eastern. <laughs> 7 o'clock Eastern. I'm like, Eastern. do you remember? <laughs> I had to count the day. I'm like, what, what What? day did we agree on? Oh, it has to be before Glee. That's why we scheduled it like this. Yeah. Although yeah. Glee's on their, like, little season break thing, so, I mean. Oh, th that we could do a special. We could do a five-hour show. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, questions or anything like that? Are you seeing... <laughs> <laughs> five hours, I'd be like, oh my god, I don't want to talk, I'm fatigued, I'm, mel I'm melting down. I'm fatigued right now, by the time I get home from work, I'm just like, I, oh, I don't have time to media. No, <laughs> I don't I'm melting down with this media. I've been networking all day, I don't have time to network. So, um, anyway, questions and answers, did we get any questions over in the live stream? Uh, no. Well, great. Thanks, live yeah. listeners. Thanks for holding up your end of the bargain. Okay, well, let's move on to uh, our special features. This is kind of our web picks of the week. It could be anything from an app to a game to a, a meme. Or um, it could just be a website you like also. It could just be a website you like. In fact, a website that I am indifferent about, and I'm kind of um, wondering if if it's going to be good or not, is uh, is Clout. Dot com. Um, I've been on the site here, and this is kind of my uh, my my plug for this week. I want to know what you guys think, though. If you would please jump on clout.com. It's in beta right now, and it, I I don't even really know how to explain it other than it's like a it makes a game out of your social media. It does. It makes a game out of your social networks, and you so you link up all your social networks here, and it kind of pulls your profile information in, and it gives you a score of how popular you are. And then what they just You're introduced popular. here, yeah, oh yeah, your influence. Um, what they just inter introduced here is um, this kind of like clout of objectives, and it's like a reward based. Like, all right, tweet this about clout uh, plus one somebody, or and it's it rewards you an arbitrary award, just gives you like a, a bonus or a uh, or like girly nerdy goodness cool points. It, it's better. It's better than that though because. These these show up on a website. Girly and Nerdy Goodness, we have to do shows in order to make them relevant. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to – I have a live shot of you making that face. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was mean and uncalled for, Joe. You're a jerk. Um, you are a jerk. I know. I'm just Everybody kidding. tells me this. I'm such a jerk. Um, anyway, so this is Clout. I really want to know what you think of it, uh, listeners. Email us, socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. Uh, I'm on it, and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to make of it. And also, Caitlin is on it. Caitlin, what do you think of Clout? I know you've been on it. We've been kind of 
plusing and and adding each other. Trying to raise each other's scores. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. We're we're gaming clout. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, I like it only because it's helped me really narrow down the type of content that I post. Um, because I'm big into individual branding and branding yourself as a person and what you have interests in. So clout kind of keeps you. So Joe is um, influential on podcasts and videos and social media. Ooh, and that social media is new because you gave me a... Uh, I did give it to you because I feel like if you're on the show, you need to be influential about social media. I know, right? <laughs> I can't so just... Then, and I think Star Wars is in there, isn't it? Yeah, I have a pretty eclectic list. My Well, that's pretty much – one of the coolest things about Clout, though, is it kind of – if you link all your stuff, and if, even if you don't want to be part of the, the madness, which is, you know, linking all the stuff and seeing your points, it kind of shows you what you've been talking about. And so, like, mine, just the top ones, I am influential in podcasting, video, social media, which is new, that just came out, uh, Star Wars, sports cars, uh, and then it goes into, like, stuff like servers. Do you tweet often about – what was it? Cars? Well, I mean, automotive stuff. Uh, yeah, but I feel like it would have said, like, automotive. What's well, a no. sports cars and in parentheses automotive? I could show you on the screen here. In parentheses. And then it says, like, servers and food and National Geographic. Like, I don't think I've ever mentioned National Geographic. <laughs> you probably saw your cloud score one day and you are like, why am I influential about uh, National Geographic? And now you're automatically. <laughs> now it, yeah. It, see, it's the echo chamber. It just keeps... For, it keeps doing it to itself. So anyway, that's what I wanted to, you guys to check out this week. Clout.com. Um, and while you're there, you could always give us a pl- K+. Plus. What did we even call that? They're called Plus Ks, I think. Plus K? Give yeah. others Plus Ks. I don't know. I don't really totally understand it. I don't even know if I like it, but I'm going to try it because I don't want to shut myself down to all this cool Mine music. are really, um, like, centralized topics. Yeah. What's the like. One? Well, I have ones that are to my area, so I'm influential on Detroit and Michigan. Uh-huh. And I'm also influential on advertising, social media, public relations, communications, iPhone, and business. Yeah, you do have a very good, um, uh, like, as far as your your message is very, very precise. Uh, so I try, that's, that's what I said. Like, once it came out and I was like, ooh, I could really hone in, like, what I actually talk about and, and be able to showcase that in a way. Um, so that's what that's what I use cloud for. Also, my work uses cloud. Um, when we bring in gl- guest bloggers, when people apply to um, – we had a demonstration at our facility a couple months ago, and um, we wanted to bring in some guest bloggers that were – um, into either automotive or um, green technologies. So we use clout to figure out which ones were actually influential because the higher their number would mean the more followers they have and the more user engagement they have, mm-hmm. more comments they get, the reads they get, whatever. So we use that to pick our uh, guest bloggers. Oh, that's cool. And it does kind of give you – it's like a, a thermometer of the Internet and your, your social – it kind of is like, okay, you're this good. Or not. It you know, like, look like you're way better than I am. But that, we're only a few numbers apart. But that graph yeah. is really... Well, that's just, yeah, that's all arbitrary stuff. So. <laughs> it, it really doesn't even make that much sense because I would almost guess that you're probably more influential than I am. So I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if this really makes a whole lot of sense yet. Yeah. But it's in beta. Check it out. Um, Caitlin, Caitlin Shelby, at, at Caitlin Shelby on Twitter, what... Yeah are you plugging this week? I am plugging something that actually goes with this week's topic, Oh. Um, which is a new children's book called Goodnight iPad, which is a parody off of the classic Goodnight Moon. <laughs> and um, it basically is just reminding kids to shut off their devices at night, and not just at night, but give themselves time to, to shut down, to reboot as a person. Um, so here's the, are you playing the little video? I'm, I'm playing the video. Yeah, you can keep okay. talking over it. So it, it, it walks through, um, kind of, you know, how annoying it is that everyone is, is, um, tethered into something and, um, that at the end of the night, you can't turn yourself off. So I think it's the grandma finally starts throwing all the technology out the window. <laughs> you know, it rhymes. So it's really funny. It's like Dr. Seuss. It is. It's really, it's a really cute book. I'm gonna order it. 
um, it's for sale on uh, Amazon and probably other places too. But I'll have the links in the show notes at justcoolenough.com and just look for the social media meltdown post. It's uh, it is pretty interesting. I, I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna buy it. Maybe I'll just borrow your copy. Is that illegal? No, not if you borrow the legitimate or like the physical copy. Apparently, I I don't. See so it is an actual physical copy. Yes, you can order physical. I can get a, a, like a book that says like, oh, good night, iPad." Yeah, it's like an actual children's book. That's amazing. This is like Dr. Seuss on the internet. Oh, I know. Who made this? Oh, it's actually this. The the link actually is off of the Penguin uh, Publishing Group. So yeah, it is published by Penguin. So it's oh, wow. a legitimate book. Wow, I had no. I thought it was just like some guy was like, "Let's make a thing called Good Night iPad." Like, <laughs> no, it actually is really informative. Like I could see it actually helping kids better understand like time management and totally. Yeah, I'm so sick. I'm mean, I'm so responsible sick. usage of of the internet. That's excellent. That is really cool. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. Well, I'd say that uh, I'd say that it's been a pretty successful show. Number episode yeah. number two here, social mm-hmm. media meltdown. Uh, uh, Starcraft two. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to plug? Anything else going on that you wanted to kind of uh, push in the right direction? Other no, than- I'm just my I I published my twenty five by twenty five list today. So the twenty five goals. Um, to, till in 25, which is a year from now as of like last month, and it was to break a thousand followers. So I'm just going to keep plugging myself to follow me on Twitter. Follow that. Shelby. Follow her on Twitter so she can get her goal by 25. And then, you know, if you have any spare time, this guy, you know, I, I can't get the, I'm still not good at the YouTubing thing. Follow me here at the Twitter.com. Either I feel really awkward doing yeah. it. I have to raise my arms very high. Maybe we should. I can just lower the camera a little bit. but <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, listening and watching, everybody. Send us your feedback. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at SpeedyF40. And I'm at Kaylin Shelby. And remember to email us at socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. Your feedback is very important to us. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. I think that's great.